Morning, everybody. How are y'all doing today? I'm doing pretty good because I'm recording this on a snow day. It's Friday right now, and it snowed so much that they canceled classes. But I'm also good because yesterday was the Xbox Developer Direct, and I don't think it was spectacular. I think it was probably like a 7 or an 8 out of 10. I'm leaning more towards 7, though. I thought it was pretty decent. My biggest complaint, though, is that the Avowed gameplay they showed honestly has me less excited for the game than I was previously. The game looks beautiful, don't get me wrong, but honestly, it looks very slow. And I don't know, it's still too early to judge, obviously, but I'm much more cautiously optimistic now than I was previously. But obviously, you had the highlight of the show, which was Indiana Jones, because not only did we get to see a trailer and some actual gameplay thrown in as well, but we actually found out it's coming out this year, which was a huge shock to me. I genuinely thought it was going to come out next year. Then again, if this is another Starfield field situation it might come out next year but we'll see honestly i like what i'm seeing so far it looks like a lot of fun personally i like the first person choice and i don't really know why people were so surprised by it because yes it is going to be an action adventure game obviously but this game is being made by a studio that makes basically only first person games but whatever you guys aren't here for my thoughts on the direct you're here for the salt and i am happy to provide we have a lot to go over today a lot of it coming from everybody's favorite big red lizard on Twitter. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this. So we are gonna talk about how the Xbox Direct had both multi-platform and a game not coming to Xbox consoles featured. Well, for starters, every Xbox game is multi-platform because they come to Xbox and they come to PC and potentially later they go to Switch and PlayStation. So that is not a surprise at all. And while it may seem weird that one of the games they showed off, that being Aura, is not coming to Xbox, at least not yet. It's still being developed by an Xbox studio, so that's why they showed it off. Though I gotta be honest, they probably could have cut that game from the presentation, and I don't think a lot of people would have cared too much. But whatever, not a terrible first tweet, just a little bit of him pointing out the obvious and trying to make it seem like a bad thing. But now let's go to a tweet that's actually bad. They can't even compete with a PS4 2016 game. And then the Red Dragon says, Harrison's face here looks like when you ask ChatGPT to make a famous face. And it says I can't do that, but I can make one similar. Now, I'm not gonna focus so much on the Red Dragon tweet here, because really, it's just too stupid to even talk about. That looks exactly like Harrison Ford. But now let's dive into the first tweet. They can't even compete with a 2016 PS4 game. First of all, I love how we're comparing what is very obviously in-engine footage, given the frame rate, to pre-rendered CGI. Because trust me, Uncharted does not look that good in-game, and we'll get to that in a minute here. Second of all, yeah, let's take that one screenshot of Indy's face and let's ignore all the environments and everything in the game. By far the best looking part, because, you know, that doesn't fit the narrative. Third of all, I love how these guys talk smack about graphics and then completely ignore the game that was shown off that's basically meant to be a tech demo and have ridiculously good looking graphics. And of course, I'm talking about Hellblade 2. It's just truly amazing to me. Indy's face doesn't look as hyper realistic as Nathan Drake even though it still looks really good. Damn, Xbox can't even compete with a 2016 PS4 game. Because as we all know, the most important thing in a game is the graphics. Nothing else matters. A game like Hellblade 2, automatically more fun than a game like Lethal Company or Lego Star Wars because it has better graphics. It's just so predictable at this point. This happens every single time a new game is shown off. Take a screenshot from the live stream instead of from the actual native trailer. Put it next to what half the time is pre-rendered CGI and say that because it doesn't look quite as good, that automatically means the game can't compete. And trust me, this is not the last time we're going to see this. For example, let's go to the next tweet. Uncharted 4 2016 PS4 base versus Indiana Jones 2024 Series X and S. First of all, you spelled Indiana wrong, unless this is some joke where it's like, oh, it's an indie game because the graphics aren't as good as Uncharted or something like that. Second of all, isn't the picture on the left constant? concept art for Uncharted 4. Whatever, whether it's concept art or CGI, it's obviously not in-game. You know, I've come to realize something as I've done this more. When Xbox shows off a CGI trailer for something, the ponies are like, oh, they're misleading people, it's CGI, it's not in-engine, the real game is gonna look so much worse. But then when Xbox shows off something in-engine, all they do is trash the graphics and talk about how it doesn't look as good as concept art or CGI in a previous game. There truly is 
no winning. Luckily, people were quick to roast this tweet and point out how stupid it was. See, I can do the same. And then we have an actual in-engine screenshot of Uncharted 4 versus a moment from the Indiana Jones trailer. Not so fun when your logic gets reversed back on you. But wait! There's more! Gears 4 2016 Xbox One versus Rise of the Ronin 2024, the only PS Studios game this year, PS5. Man, it's almost like anybody can cherry pick super realistic screenshots from one game and super blurry low res images from another game, and then say that the more realistic looking game is automatically better because my graphics. It truly warms my heart to see people clown on people like this. Because honestly, this whole trend of taking two games and putting screenshots side by side and saying that one's gonna be better than the other based off of graphics alone is really annoying and if you do it then stop it hey stop it stop it okay 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 but anyway let's get into another red dragon tweet now i know there's gonna be a lot of them today i'm sorry hey it's not my fault he says a lot of dumb stuff in a very short amount of time now this is him quote tweeting a tweet about how hellblade 2 will be 50 dollars and it won't have a physical release this is xbox they probably already know that it's not gonna sell well and not worth the money to print discs there's a reason they won't show unscripted gameplay well first of all they did show unscripted gameplay yesterday granted it wasn't shorter cuts, but they did show it nonetheless. Go and look up the Hellblade 2 presentation from yesterday and skip to the combat part. But you want to know the reason why it's going to be all digital? It's because like 90% of the market is digital. And honestly, based off of the research that I've done, Hellblade seems to be like Xbox's Returnal, where it only sells around a million copies or so, and that seems bad, but for the studios making it, that's a big success. And also, this may be a slight deviation, but it's always funny to me when ponies call Hellblade Hellblade 2, just a 5 to 8 hour DLC. It's so short that they can't even justify selling it for 70, so they're selling it for 50 instead. When I can think of a certain other game that came out back in 2020 that was quite similar to what they described, yet it still received high praise. Again, not really relevant to this tweet, just something I kind of wanted to bring up. Alright, I promise what we're about to talk about are the final two Red Dragon tweets of this video. So this next one is the Red Dragon's overall thoughts on the Xbox Direct. Let's take a gander. Indiana Jones, nostalgia, saved the Xbox Direct from being a complete dud. Avowed looks rough and a passion double A project. Hellblade 2 is shorter than the already short first game, which puts it in tech demo territory with 97% walking scenes. Live chat went nuts when Square Enix showed up, only to cry when it was mana revealed. Aura looked good, PC only and not on Xbox consoles. Indiana Jones, nostalgia is a hell of a drug. Remove Harrison Ford and Indiana Jones title and doesn't look that great, and first person is a very questionable move, but I'll be playing it due to nostalgia alone. What do you rate it, and what do you agree or disagree with? Alrighty, let's go ahead and break this down real quick, because there was a lot to unpack there. Avowed looks rough, and like a passionate double A project. This is like the one point I somewhat agree on, and I was watching Griffin's video, I definitely don't agree with a lot of it, but the main thing I do agree with him on is Avowed looks like it was meant to be a VR title, and then it got ported to regular PC and consoles. The combat definitely looked a bit stiff, and like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm actually a bit more concerned after this Direct than I was previously. So, yeah, all I'm saying is be cautiously optimistic about Avowed. Hellblade 2, no, it's not shorter than the first game. They said it's gonna be the same length. Also, I love how now all the sudden games with a lot of walking are an issue. Now, don't get me wrong, Hellblade definitely seems like it's going to be an extended tech demo, but it's just hilarious hilarious to me that now that Xbox has a game with a lot of walking and great graphics, they don't get praised for how great the game looks and how, oh my god, it's so much better than anything on the competitor's platform. Instead, it's, wow, this game is going to be walking most of the time and it's a tech demo. There truly is no winning. These guys want a visual spectacle from Xbox and they get it, but then they don't focus on how great the game looks and instead focus on how much walking there is, when these are the same people that will shill for Horizon. A game which very 
well encapsulates the phrase all style, no substance. But again, it's only a problem when Xbox does it, right? Then we get to Square Enix and how the chat went nuts when they showed up only to be disappointed by mana. Yeah, you want to know why the chat was disappointed when it was mana? It's because the chat wanted Final Fantasy 7 or Final Fantasy 16 on Xbox. So when Square Enix showed up just to show off a bit more of an already announced game, you know, that might be a bit disappointing to some people. Aura looked good, PC only and not on Xbox consoles. Yeah, you know, it seems like a game that kind of requires mouse and keyboard. So not really very surprising. And finally, Indiana Jones. Ah, uh, yes, nostalgia is a hell of a drug, which I mean, he's not wrong, it is. But to imply that people are only excited for the game because of nostalgia, that's just stupid. I'm excited for the game, and I know this is about to make a lot of people very sad, but I haven't seen the original Indiana Jones movies. I've only seen the most recent one. Boo, you stink! I can already see the comments coming in of people telling me to watch the original movies. I know, I will, I will. I'm sorry, my dad was kind of into them, but ultimately he was more of a Star Wars guy. I watched those movies growing up. Whatever, the point is, I am not even a big Indiana Jones fan, at least not yet, and I am still excited for this game. It's not just nostalgia that's making people excited. All right, moving on from that, that final red dragon tweet and then we'll get into some other ones avowed looks like one of those passion projects you know feel however you want about avowed but i would like to take the time right now to remind you all that this is the same guy who defended and shilled for quantum error remember that game i say game that unreal engine asset flip yeah this guy will defend games like that but then call avowed a passion project you have absolutely no room to speak i mean even putting aside the quantum error stuff you already didn't really have room to speak, but now you especially don't. All right, we did it. We got past all the red dragon stuff. Did you guys think we were done comparing NPCs in different games? Well, if you did, then surprise. NPC comparison. Horizon Forbidden West PS4 versus Avowed Series X. Who did it better? Well, my question in this situation is this. Phase Jeff, please take it away. Who gives a fuck? Like, genuinely, why do you care this much? One's a screenshot from a live stream. One's a screenshot from in game. One of them is human. One of them is some other form of human. So of course the one on the right is going to look uglier. And on top of that, again, I just, I don't understand. Why does it matter this much? Why are you guys so wrapped up in how NPCs in different games compare visually? Especially when they both look very good. Like, don't get me wrong. The guy in Avowed is definitely on the uglier side, but the graphics are still insanely good. And like I said with Indiana Jones, of course, we focus on this one screenshot that's slightly blurry and lower res because it's from a live stream and not all the other parts that look incredibly good. Like, Avowed's environments look extremely good. And again, whether or not you think that NPC from Avowed is ugly, go back and watch it. Look at all the detail on his jacket, on his skin. You can see, like, individual little scales and lines and stuff. You know, these are things that the ponies would be pointing out if this game was made by PlayStation. Remember the whole piece? fuzz thing when Horizon Forbidden West came out? Like, again, I must ask. Who cares? I know I've said it already, but every game has to be a graphical showcase to these guys. And then when you do have a graphical showcase like Hellblade 2, they completely ignore it and talk about all the other games that aren't graphical showcases and instead actually focus on the gameplay. You know, the most important part of a video game. The goalpost shifting is absolutely wild. But either way, I've had enough of talking about NPC graphics compared since let's just move on. Looks like PS5 still currently has the most first party games slated for 2024 so far. So what do we have here? We have The Last of Us Remastered. All right, great, a remaster. Rise of the Ronin. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure Sony is only publishing that game and not developing it. Concord, which we know nothing about. The only thing we've seen is a CGI hamburger in a trailer, which by the way, that trailer got dislike bombed. Then there's Stellar Blade, again, like Rise of the Ronin, I'm pretty sure Sony is just publishing that game, but not actually developing it. And then Helldivers 2. Last I checked, Sony doesn't own Arrowhead, so again, they're just publishing the game. So in reality, they have, what, two first-party games coming out this year? One of them is a remaster of a not-even four-year-old game, and another is... we don't even know anything about it besides CGI Hamburger. Plus, for Xbox, this dude forgot to mention that Call of Duty's coming out this year. So, as DJ Khaled would say. Congratulations, you played yourself. 
As of right now, I'm gonna have to say no roadmap is looking better than the Xbox roadmap. So let me get this straight real quick. You would rather have nothing coming out for the rest of the year over a new RPG from Obsidian, an Indiana Jones game, and Hellblade 2. You would rather have nothing than something. Do I have this right? You're acting like Xbox announced they're publishing the sequel to Golem or something like that. How do you see the lineup of Hellblade, Indiana Jones, Jones and Avowed and think, damn, Xbox is screwed. They might as well not even have a lineup. This might be the biggest overreaction to the Direct that I've seen. Like, again, have your opinion, but this just seems a bit extreme. No roadmap is better than the roadmap they have. I can't even think of a realistic situation where that would even be the case. Maybe if their only thing coming out this year was Redfall 2 or the Redfall DLC or something, then I would agree. But besides that, nah, bro, you're either huffing meth or Copium, or maybe both at the same time. Who knows? Alrighty, I know you've been waiting for him. Time for J Dub. Xbox has no games in the first half of 2024. Shameful. My brother in Christ, there are 12 months in a year. May is the fifth month. That is the first half. Hellblade 2 comes out in May. Also, something I just noticed about this tweet. I didn't notice this before, but I just caught on to it now. Why is Xbox has no games capitalized? I hate to be a grammar Nazi, but like, what? Yo, you know what? That could be the next Indiana Jones movie. Indiana Jones versus the Grammar Nazis. Because, you know, he fights Nazis in the other movies. I I'm sorry. But seriously, now we've forgotten how the year works. Either he's ignoring Hellblade 2 or he forgot that May is in the first half of the year. Either way, this tweet is flat out wrong. Or maybe he's saying that, oh, Hellblade isn't a game, it's a tech demo. Which, I mean, eh. Spec, I'm so sorry, don't hate me for that. Speaking of which, go watch Spec's love letter to the first Hellblade. It'll be in the description. Also, Hellblade is like $3 on Steam right now, and it's on Game Pass, so definitely pick it up if you want to try it out. And here we go, the final tweet to end the video on. Once again, talking about Hellblade 2. Five years to develop, mocap with a mobile app, $50, under eight hours, micro dev budget, on Game Pass, predecessor on PlayStation and Nintendo. That MFR is joining Hi-Fi Rush. So it's joining Hi-Fi Rush. So what you're saying is it's going to be a great game that that people, including ponies like yourself, will talk about even a year later. And you're gonna beg for it to come to PlayStation. Do I have that right? All right, cool. Now I'm even more excited for the game. But yeah, anyway, guys, that's pretty much all I've got for now. I'll definitely do videos in the coming days talking about people's live reactions to this direct. I'm pretty sure the amazing Lucas was salty the entire time. And as always, I'm very interested to see what JTEC has to say. But until then, I just want to thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will catch you all next time.